Hi, I'm Jake from Gaia Resources. I'll be taking you through exercise two. Welcome to exercise two of our environmental QGIS for beginners course. In this exercise, we will focus on the following topics related to data structure and review. Identifying data, both vector and raster, the attribute table, selecting data, measuring areas, distances, and angles, adding and removing toolbars, and data formats. To ensure consistency, we have created a QGIS workspace for you for this exercise. To begin, open up the Exercise 2 workspace provided. In your Training Data folder, locate Folder, Training Data, and then Workspaces. Open Exercise 2 Gaia. Now we need to save it in your working folders. Once the workspace is open, in the top toolbar, click Save As. Save it in the folder Training Outputs Workspaces as Exercise 2. Identifying data allows you to review the attributes that have been saved within the dataset for a feature. For example, this could be a property boundary, a park, a road, a town site, and so on. Click the Nature Reserves layer to activate it. Now go to the Identify Features tool in the top toolbar. In the map canvas, click on the large reserve located on the top right of the data. The polygon should now be highlighted a different colour and the Identify Results window will pop up listing all the features and values associated with that polygon. Depending on your personalised QGIS settings, the Info tool may also pop up in the table of contents. What is the feet type or feature type of this reserve? The Identify tool also tells us that the reserve is named Fitzgerald River National Park. The authority is the State Territory National Parks and Wildlife Service or equivalent and that the data was sourced from Geoscience Australia. Use the Identify Features tool again on the other layers to answer the following questions. And remember, you need to select a layer in the table of contents before you can identify it. What is the name of the only town? What are the names of two of the islands? Name a type of road class. Click the clear results icon at the bottom of the identify results tool. Close the identify results window. We can also identify the values within grid cells of a raster layer. Activate the GeoTopo MGA50 layer so you can see it in the map canvas. Click on the GeoTopo MGA50 layer to select it. Click the Identify Features tool in the top toolbar. In the Map Canvas, click on the large reserve located on the top right of the data. What details come up in the Information window? What do you think these values represent? Note, rasters do not contain attribute tables and usually only contain a value for each grid cell. This could be an elevation height, or as is commonly the case with imagery, a red, green, blue value indicating a colour. Rasters can store values for any variable like pH, average wind speed, temperature, etc. Raster layers also have properties, but they differ greatly from vector layers. Right click the topo layer, click properties, review the different details under each tab. Now, why is this important? The Layer Properties window is the central place to change the way that data for a layer is displayed in QGIS. In the properties of a vector layer, you have a wide range of controls to change the symbology, add labels, and work with tables. In a raster layer properties, it is more about the colour ranges applied, statistical display adjustments, and settings to make QGIS more efficient in rendering that gridded data. The properties are also where you view the layer CRS, or Coordinate Reference System. Click Cancel. As we will not be using the raster layer in the following exercises, remove it from the table of contents. Right click the topo in the table of contents. Click Remove and then click OK. Using the Identify Features tool allows you to see the attributes of one item at a time. The attribute table of a layer lets you review multiple features all at once. The attribute table is similar to a Microsoft Excel table as it shows features and values in separate rows and fields. 
Within the attribute table, you can do things like sort records on a column, perform selections, and run summary statistics. Right-click the Nature Reserves layer in your table of contents. Click Open Attribute Table. The different areas of the attribute table are as follows. Layer Name, the layer the attribute table belongs to. Table Details, shows how many features are in the table, how many are selected, and how many are filtered. Toolbar, contains tools for manipulating the table. Attribute Name, the attribute name or field name is the title of the field. Features, contains all the information related to one feature in the layer in one row. Row IDs, the attribute table row ID for each feature. Values, the information found within the cell. Data display format, allows user to toggle between different viewing formats, table format shown here, or there is also a form format. To review the attribute table, click on row ID 6 and review the map canvas. The Fitzgerald River National Park should be highlighted. If you can't see the map canvas, resize or move the attribute table until both are visible. Use the scroll bar at the bottom of the attribute table to review all the values found within this feature. Click the name field name to order the values alphabetically. To resize the fields, hover over the edge of the field. When a double sized arrow appears, click and drag the arrow to make the field larger. Although this type of table is informative, table formats can be difficult to read and review, especially when dealing with very large attribute tables. QGIS gives the option of viewing individual features in a form type format. Click the form view button found at the bottom right of the table. To change the field, click on the field selector drop down and hover over column preview and choose ABC name from the list. You will now see the form view for the field name. Click on the Fitzgerald River National Park value listed to the left. You should now see all the attribute details related to that park appear to the right. Hover over column preview again from the form set drop down. When the drop down appears, all the available field names will appear. Selecting one of these will show your data via that field type. Click on Feet Rel. This will bring up the attributes listed by the recorded dates. Click back to Table View, found at the bottom right of the table. Close the table. Click on the cross on the top right corner. In the top toolbar in your workspace, click Deselect Features from All Layers to unselect the National Park. Click Save. You can also open the attribute table from the attributes toolbar located in the top toolbar, but remember to activate your desired layer first. Now review the attribute tables of your layers to find the following information. How many lakes are recorded in the lakes layer? Which nature reserve has a feet rail value of 200320? The selection tool enables you to specifically select various elements in the map. Select the Nature Reserves layer in the table of contents. Click Select Features by Freehand. Click the map canvas and drag your cursor around the reserves found to the left of the South Coast Highway. Now draw a very rough polygon similar to the orange dash boundary shown in the image below. Hold down the left mouse button. The area you're selecting will become opaque white. The Nature Reserve selected will come up a different colour. Default is yellow. Open the Nature Reserve's attribute table. Change the Select button to Show Selected Features, found in the bottom left corner. The table will now only show the data that was selected. How many reserves are selected? To unselect the data, either click Unselect All in the Attributes table or in the top toolbar in the workspace. Go back into the attribute table, sort by name, and click on row ID 6 to highlight the feature. In the attribute table toolbar, click zoom map to the selected rows. This will zoom the map canvas to the extents of the reserve. Close the attribute table. The measuring tool in the top toolbar allows you to measure lines, areas, and angles in your map canvas. There are three options, measure line, measure area, and measure angles. Click the small arrow to the right of the measuring tool. Select Measure Area. Click New. Now roughly click around the perimeter of the selected reserve. This will bring up the measure window which calculates the area as you click around it. Right click to finalize the measurement. Measuring data in this way is only a very rough estimate. 
Exact areas based on the shape can be calculated using an expression. Expressions will be discussed later on in the training. Close the measuring window. Zoom your map canvas to the full extent. Deselect any features that may be still selected. There are also additional toolbars and tools that you can use in your workspace. Right click the grey space located at the top of the workspace. Deactivate the layers panel and review how the workspace changes. Reactivate the layers panel toolbar. Ensure the label toolbar is activated. We will use this later on in the exercises. Activate the browser panel. This panel allows you to review and add data from your computer as another alternative to using Windows File Explorer. Use the browser panel to find your training data on your computer. Locate the folder, training data, shapefiles, Bremer Bay. Double click watercourse lines shapefile. Move the layer under lakes and rename it to rivers. You are able to move toolbars around the workspace by dragging and dropping dotted panel. Sometimes we need GIS data in a specific format. This method will show you how to convert your Esri shapefile into a GPS ready format called GPS Exchange Format or GPX. This is used for features such as waypoints, routes, and tracks. Right click the roads layer. Click save as. For format, select GPS Exchange Format GPX. Save as roads in the folder Training Outputs Excel. Click save. Uncheck add saved file to map. Click OK. This file is now in a format that can be uploaded into a GPS. Right click the nature reserves layer. Click open attribute table. Highlight all the rows in the table by clicking the select all icon. On your keyboard, click Ctrl C. Open Microsoft Excel. Click in a cell and click Ctrl V or right click paste. Save the spreadsheet as nature reserves in the folder Training Outputs Excel. Close the spreadsheet. Unselect all records and close the attribute table back in QGIS. This is a useful way of navigating around the map canvas when digitizing at a small scale. Right click anywhere on the top toolbar. Check overview panel. In the table of contents, right click on the mainlands layer. Click show in overview. You may need to drag the edge of the overview panel to enlarge it. Now zoom into a scale of 1 is to 80,000 and pan around the map. You'll see the extent of your map canvas display in the overview. Remove the overview panel from the table of contents. Save and close your workspace. That's the end of exercise 2. Hopefully you're now familiar with basic data structure and review elements. Head to exercise 3 to look at symbolizing and labeling data. Thanks for watching.